Aldehydes. Aldehydes have the general form RHO. So just to be super clear, the carbon, an end carbon in a parent hydrocarbon, is double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to a hydrogen. And we call this group at the beginning or end, if you will, of a parent chain, the formal group. Now, this carbon will always be carbon number one. So whether it shows up on the left or the right, it's always carbon number one. Okay, think about that functional group and decide whether molecules with this functional group can hydrogen bond with um, themselves. So can one aldehyde molecule form a hydrogen bond with another molecule like it? And then decide similarly for water. So pause the video, think about it, maybe draw a picture and, well actually definitely draw a picture and then fill in the blanks under physical properties with can or cannot. Okay, so in looking at the diagrams, you can see here that I have two aldehyde molecules and the functional groups are lined up to potentially set up a hydrogen bond. But you'll notice that the hydrogen here in this molecule is directly bonded to a carbon. Therefore, that bond's not polar enough to create an attraction of a hydrogen bond strength. And so we really just have the polarity in that C double bond O bond, which sets up the ability uh, for dipole-dipole forces to form. And so, no, hydrogen uh, aldehydes cannot hydrogen bond with like molecules. Now how about with water? Can aldehyde molecules form hydrogen bonds with water? Why don't you draw a picture, try to figure that out, and then check back in with the video. Okay, so checking the molecule over here on the right, I have the aldehyde functional group, the formal group, and water. And you'll see that the oxygen can form a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen in water because that H is directly bonded to an oxygen. This aldehyde hydrogen will not be susceptible to a hydrogen bond because it's directly bonded to a carbon. And so, yes, these molecules can hydrogen bond with water. So what would you predict then? Here I have a question mark. So what would you predict for the boiling point of an aldehyde relative to the boiling point of an alcohol? Pause the video, think, think about the intermolecular forces that aldehyde molecules experience with one another and think about the forces that alcohols experience with one another and decide how you think similar sized molecules would compare. So in other words, a five carbon aldehyde and a five carbon alcohol. What do you think? Greater than, less than, or equal? Okay, I'm hoping you predicted that the aldehyde would have a lower boiling point than the alcohols, thinking that the alcohols are capable of hydrogen bonding with each other, and yet the aldehydes have dipole-dipole forces only. Now, for your information, when the uh, aldehyde has one or two carbons in it, those small molecules will be gases. But the dipole-dipole forces are enough, once we have three or more carbons, to have this, these molecules be liquids. And really, once you get to 15 carbons in the aldehyde, they'll tend to be solids. Now, regarding solubility, we saw that these molecules are able to hydrogen bond with water, and so the small ones are soluble. They will have a pungent odor, so a strong, somewhat foul odor. Once you get to five to seven carbons, they tend to be slightly soluble. So as the nonpolar region increases, we definitely see solubility in water decreasing. When we're at eight or more carbons in the parent chain of the aldehyde, then these molecules tend to be pretty insoluble in water. And interestingly enough, at that point, have a more pleasant odor. Okay, so moving along now with the naming. The key with naming aldehydes is to remember that the formal group 
that carbon is always carbon number one and that the suffix is al, so al. And you, that, you might think of that as you think of aldehyde, so al. We never number that aldehyde suffix because it's always going to be carbon number one. Don't forget to drop the E on the parent name before you add the suffix. So checking out our examples, A, B, C. They run pretty straightforward. So I suggest you number the carbons, write the name of the parent alkane, drop the E, and add the suffix AL. Check in with the video when you've tried A, B, and C. Okay, so one carbon, we're thinking methane, drop the E, methanal. Now in brackets I've put the common name which is very commonly used and so you you should know this one formaldehyde. Now just as a uh, comment for you this form when you see form in chemistry that typically means one carbon. Okay so if you can remember that formaldehyde then that'll tell you it's a one carbon aldehyde. Methanol is the proper name, the IUPAC name. For part B, we see two carbons, ethane, drop the E, ethanol. Now you'll see a common name here, acetaldehyde. And so you may have heard of acetic acid. That's going to be an organic acid that has two carbons in it. And here we see acetaldehyde, a two carbon aldehyde. So acet typically means two carbons. I numbered the carbons from right to left, for example, C, because the functional group, the formal group, needs to have the lowest possible number. Propane, drop the E, propan now. Okay, I'll slide the screen up and you can try the next few examples. Okay, so D, E, F, and G. Give those a shot. Okay, so for example, D, numbered five carbons from the right, that gives us pentanal. We see methyls off of three and four. So three, four, dimethyl pentanal. Example E, two, four, dibromo pentanal. Did you use the formal carbon as carbon number one? So did you find the longest chain? That's what you were looking for there. Okay, in part F, between the double bond and the formal group, the formal group takes priority, and so I number from right to left, one, two, three, which puts a double bond after two, and I do not need to number the location of the aldehyde because it's always carbon number one. So prop two N Al. And for part G, I'll number from the right. I see an ethyl off of three, a methyl off of six, and there's 10 carbons in this aldehyde. 3-ethyl, 6-methyl, decanal. Okay, moving up. I have question H here for you to try. And I'll just draw your attention to the red box or the red information here for priority. Just notice in category A that I have the aldehyde now above the alcohol. So in other words, when you have a formal group present and a hydroxyl group present, the formal group takes priority. So it gets the lowest possible number and the suffix will be AL for aldehyde, which means that the hydroxyl group needs to be named as a side group, a branch. So if you think back to your alcohol lesson, you'll recall the prefix is hydroxy. So go ahead and try question H. Okay, and so I numbered from left to right to give the formal group the lowest possible number. One, two, three, four means butanel, and we see a hydroxy off of carbon four. So four hydroxy butanel. Now, over here on the other side of the priority list, there's question I. I'm asking you to draw benzaldehyde. So there's a benzene ring and there's a formal group. So figure out what that looks like, and I challenge you like count your bonds make sure that you don't go beyond the octet for any carbon check in with the video when you've tried it okay so you'll notice that I drew the benzene ring showing the alternating single and double bonds because I wanted to make it obvious that every carbon of the ring here has already three bonds visible to the carbons so if it's also going to be bonding to a hydrogen for example here 
then there's no way that we can put a double bond oxygen and a hydrogen into this mix. So we're already at the octet. And so benzaldehyde features a benzene ring with a formal group attached to a carbon that is attached to the benzene ring. So the formal group is right here and it cannot be a carbon of the benzene ring. There just aren't enough, uh, there isn't room, we can't expand beyond the octet for carbon. Okay, last bit, moving into reactions. So take a moment and jot this down and we'll fill in the blanks together. Um, I will ask you as you're writing this down to make a decision here. When you look at this example, is this a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol? Okay, so the first reaction here is an oxidation reaction, and hopefully you decided that that was a primary alcohol. So the carbon that the OH is attached to is itself bonded to one other carbon. So really there's a hydroxyl group on the end carbon. Now this reagent here is an O in round brackets. That is most definitely not O2. This is not a combustion reaction. So please make sure that you pay special attention. They're round brackets around a capital O and what we're doing there is indicating that an oxidizing agent is required to for this reaction to occur. There are many options for oxidizing agents. Some will work better for certain reactions than others. An example I've provided here might be potassium dichromate. You don't need to memorize the example of the oxidizing agent. You do need to know that an O in round brackets means an oxidizing agent and therefore an oxidation reaction. So what happens here is that H2 is removed from the alcohol. We remove H2 from the alcohol. So what's left over? CH3 bonded to a carbon that's still bonded to a hydrogen and it's bonded to the oxygen. Now how many bonds is that carbon making to the oxygen in order to make it stable? Two bonds. So you'll see that we've formed an aldehyde. Water is released the high two hydrogens coming from the alcohol and the oxidizing agent being a source of oxygen. And so the general pattern here is that a primary alcohol oxidizes to form an aldehyde and water. So I suggest you put that on a cue card or into your Quizlet app and practice. Out of interest sake here, you can see in this reaction that an alcohol, so an alcohol has been dehydrogenated, removed hydrogen. And so the alcohol has been dehydrogenated. Do you see how we're forming the word aldehyde? And so that may help you remember the reaction and what it forms. Okay, in part B, I'm showing you that aldehyde, so here it is here, the RHO, and now we're hydrogenating it. So essentially, the H2 gets added across the carbon double bonded to the oxygen. So think of the C double bondo becoming C single bondo. It still has the original hydrogen, and now two new H's come on, one here and one attached to the oxygen. We call this a reduction reaction and specifically hydrogenation. And so the aldehyde hydrogenates to reform the primary alcohol. There's only one product. Okay, last one here is when we take an aldehyde. So our product that we formed in reaction A there and oxidize that. And so as we further oxidize an aldehyde, we actually generate a carboxylic acid, which is the topic of the next set of lessons after aldehyde and ketones. So this will be something to remember, oops, this will be something to remember for later that we are preparing carboxylic acids by the oxidation of aldehydes. And that's it for aldehydes.